I wonder how many layers of advertisements you'd have to cut through before getting to the wall. Yes? What do you want? I was told this was the place to come if I wanted to ride the dragon. Oh. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. Excuse me, I'm looking for a man by the name of Darius. Well, look no further. Welcome, friend. Sit, join me. I'll stand, if that's all right. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Questions are the path to enlightenment. Answers fly by as birds on the breeze. But will a caged bird sing? That is the true question. Wonderful. He's as high as a kite. This is going to be worse than pulling teeth. Are you familiar with a man named Ronan Lespay? I know many men. Some old, some young, some rich, some poor. Some I know by name, some by face. But this man you speak of, this Ronan, he is unfamiliar to me. I have a ferrotype. Do you recognize him? Mm, forgive me, but my eyes are blurry. I kind of make out his features. Well, he's useless, isn't he? Too bad there's no way to snap him out of it, like there was with Dupre's kid. Do you know anything about the murder outside the Silent Raven on election night? Murder? Was it a murder? It was. A man was shot in cold blood. That would explain the commotion, as well as the sound. So you heard the gunshot? I did. I thought it might have been one of the voting machines making a noise. But then there were shouts, and people began to run. Did you see or hear anything before you heard the gunshot? I seem to remember hearing a man shouting a name. A name? Yes. It sounded like Priscilla. Well, how about that? He's managed to be of some use after all. Assuming he's telling the truth, of course. And does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Afraid not, young man. What can you tell me about the Silent Raven? Ah, the Raven. My home away from home. I would have thought that was this place. Unless this one is just the home. Do you have many friends there? People you speak with often? Yes, friends. I call them friends anyway, but really, what is a friend? Someone who drinks with you? Someone who shares secrets with you? Are those friends? My father used to tell me that the only two friends you had were your mother and the crown in your pocket. Well, both of those are gone now, so what does that mean for me? I don't know, sir. I'm just asking about people you speak to at the Raven. The barmaid, Nicole, she gets mad at me sometimes when I break things. <laughs> but she's all right. Have you ever conversed with a patron called Singing Tom? Singing Tom? You mean old Tom Puffin? I'm not sure. I was just told he was called Singing Tom and was a regular at the Silent Raven. That's the man. I see him in here all the time. In here? Not just at the Raven? Tom is a child of the poppy, just as I am. He truly understands the world as it is. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Yes. He's the choir master at St. Denis Cathedral. That's where he spends his time when he's not here. You mean to tell me we have to talk to another one of these loonies? Wonderful. Do you often come to this establishment, Darius? Oh, yes. This place is better than any doctor or hospital. It has exactly the cure I need. Cure? For what? I'm ill, sir. Just as you are. Just as we all are. Infected by a terrible disease known as life. Speak for yourself. But spend a few hours in here with the intoxicating nectar of the poppy, and you'll find nothing can defeat you. So did you manage to get out of here and vote? Please don't bother me with such trivial matters. Why should I care who leads the government? As long as they don't outlaw places like this, they can do whatever they please. Is this guy ignorant or just apathetic? Yeah, well, I don't know, and I don't care. I was wondering if you could tell me whether you saw a certain man at the Raven on election night. He's tall, of strong build, with a beard or mutton chops, dressing all in black and possibly wearing a cap. Lots of people like that go to the Raven. I see loads of them every night. 
But now that you mention it, I do remember someone like that. He was a strange one. How so? I remember one of the times he came in, he was adjusting his hat. I could have sworn when he took it off for just a moment, his hair was bright red. How is that strange exactly? Because his beard was jet black. It was the oddest thing I'd seen. Well, it was the oddest thing I'd seen. Until his beard slid halfway down his face. I see. Well, thank you for the information. Wonderful. This testimony is about as useful as a hole in the head. Then again, there might be something to it. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, young man. May you find peace and happiness. to wonder when you'd show up. Well, wonder no longer. I'm here and I need to see Dr. Edwards. Oh, I see how it is. He helped you solve a case and now you don't have time for us lowly front desk clerks. That's just the way it goes, Upton. Maybe next time you should pick a nicer coffee house. Right. You know the way. Snelling isn't in today, so you're all clear. Well, that's a relief. Thanks, Upton. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, Edwards. Ah, Fordham. Always a pleasure. Have you got time for some questions? Of course. So what can you tell me about Ronan Lespay? Caucasian male, approximately 27 years old, died of blood loss as a result of being shot at close range. He was brought in four nights ago. I performed the postmortem the following day. After that, his next of kin was contacted. I believe his sister came to identify the body. Any personal opinions on what might have happened? Well, the fact he was shot at such a close range would suggest it was done by someone he knew. And robbery doesn't appear to be a motive, since his wallet was found on the body with money in it. Beyond that, your guess is as good as mine. Better, I hope. Did the post-mortem reveal anything? Quite a few things, actually. Mr. Lespay was extremely inebriated when the shooting took place. There was enough alcohol in his blood to presume he had been drinking for hours before his death. I also managed to remove the bullet from his heart. It's a 36 caliber lead ball, standard revolver shot. It shouldn't be too hard to match to a weapon, provided you can find it. Did you notice anything unusual about the clothes Mr. Lespay was wearing? Unusual? Not really. They seemed a bit big for him, but that's all. His sister seemed convinced that they didn't belong to him. That's a distinct possibility, but I couldn't say for sure. He could have just been a sloppy dresser. I found this pistol at the scene of the Lespay crime. Did you take a look and see if it was used to murder him? It's all slimy. Where was it? Sitting at the bottom of a storm drain. Oh, I suppose that's not as exciting as finding it inside someone's intestines. Did I ever tell you about that post-mortem, by the way? No, I certainly don't want to hear about it now. How long will it take you to analyze that pistol? I should have something conclusive within the hour, if you don't mind waiting. No, it'll give me some time to gather my thoughts. Right, I've concluded my analysis, and this gun was definitely used to shoot Mr. Lespay. The bullet I removed from his body is a perfect match. Thank you, Edwards. That is extremely helpful. There's one more thing. I cleaned off some of the muck and found the initials JB etched into the handle. Interesting. My expertise with guns is purely forensic, so I can't determine if this is the gun's maker or the initials of its owner. That's going to have to be your job. Thank you, Edwards. Help is always appreciated. How's the coroner business? Things have been pretty dead around here lately. Don't quit your day job, Edwards. What are your thoughts on the election? There was an election? I think our friend Edwards needs to get out a bit more. I'll be going now, Edwards. Take care, Fordham. And remember, not everyone gets to leave the morgue alive. So consider yourself lucky that you can.
Can we talk for a moment, Upton? Certainly. What's on your mind? You wouldn't happen to know anything about Ronan Lespay, would you? Probably nothing more than you already know. His body is in the mortuary, and the reason for his murder is unknown. I suggest you speak with Dr. Edwards. Upton, I need you to put out a bulletin. There's someone I need found. Oh? Who's that? I don't know his name. I only have a description. All right, I'll need to ask you a few questions. Could you describe the man's height and build? He's tall, with a large build. All right. What color is his hair? I'm certain it's red. Hmm. All right. Do you know of any unique details that might make him easier to identify? Yes, he has a scar on his left cheek in the shape of a shepherd's crook. Good. That will be helpful. All right, I'll put out the bulletin. Give me a moment. All right, the bulletin is out. I'll let you know if... Upton, just got your bulletin. Hello, Giles. Have you got something for me? As a matter of fact, I've got someone in the jail fitting your description perfectly. You don't say. Yup. Name's Harvey Presser. Got picked up a couple of days ago. Thank you, Giles. You heard the man, Fordham. You've got yourself someone to interrogate over at Bow Street. Can we talk for a moment, Upton? Certainly. What's on your mind? Upton, what do you have on this Harvey Presser fellow? Give me a moment, and I'll locate the arrest report. Here we are. He was picked up in a bar in Chumley after being identified as the leader of a cooping gang by one of his fellow gang members. So much for loyalty. Anything else about him? Not much besides his address. That might be worth looking into. It's 5885 Riverview Road, right near the asylum. Ah, wonderful. Maybe afterwards you can drop by and pick out a room. That was one hell of an election, wasn't it? That it was. I don't know how he managed it, but I'm glad Leroy won. I feel the same. Atwood seemed convinced he had it in the bag. I think he just grossly underestimated how much the Lygia disaster affected everyone. Thought we could go on like nothing happened. Hell, if Prince Harold hadn't been aboard, we would have. Now, isn't that sad? I'll let you get back to work. And you'd better do the same. Just a moment. Yeah? What do you want? Ooh, she doesn't look like the type to take any guff. Better watch yourself, Miles. Mrs. Presser, I'd like to speak with you about your husband. Well, he's not here right now. He's been away for a few days, actually. Who are you exactly? My name's Miles Fordham. I just have a few questions. I promise this won't take long. All right, come in. But try and keep it down. My daughter isn't feeling well, and I don't want her being disturbed. She doesn't look so good. Some of those modern steam cleaners. If they use them in this place, they clearly aren't worth a damn. Seems to be a notice from the bank threatening to foreclose on this place if they're late on their rent payment again. No wonder Harvey's taken a second job. Mrs. Presser? Yeah, what? You know a man named Ronan Lespay? Never heard of him. And you've never seen the man in this ferrotype? Nope, and I'm glad I haven't. Looks like a real pushover. What does your husband do for a living, Mrs. Presser? Harvey? He's a traveling salesman. Sells steam-powered cleaners like the ones in the corner there. Oh? Doesn't make much money on account of most people being afraid of steam tech these days. But Harvey tries his best to provide for me and little Mary. He's a good man. The job takes him out of town for days at a time, but we get by. And that's all he does? What are you asking? You know something I don't? No, not at all. I was just curious. Oh, look, another husband keeping secrets from his wife. 
There are copper a dozen around here, it seems. So what do you do while your husband's away? Hang on there, what are you playing at? I'm a married woman. I merely wanted to know a bit more about you, that's all. I'm in no disrespect. Is that your game? Asking innocent ladies about themselves so you can have your way? She doesn't have to worry about being mistaken for innocent, that's for sure. No, I... It, you know what? Just forget I said anything. Is your daughter all right? Eh, she's just come down with a bit of something. This stew I'm making will put her right again. I've been giving her regular doses of Pink Bladder's Miracle Tonic, too. I'm sure she'll be back to tearing the house down again in a matter of days. Ticks after her father, that one. Are you pleased with the election results? Yeah, I'm glad that no good high muckamuck Atwood was voted out. Maybe now they can finally get to work on that bridge to Gascone we've been promised for so long. But won't Leroy's opposition to Steam Tech be bad for your husband's business? Maybe, but Harvey's always managed to land on his feet. If it comes down to it, I'm sure he'll be able to find a new job in no time. I was never too keen on him selling those contraptions anyway. It'll be a relief to get them out of the house. I don't have any more questions for you, Mrs. Presser. Good. Fought him? You look even worse than the last time I saw you. We can't all manage to keep looking as good as you, Giles. What brings you back? I'm looking to speak with your prisoner. Presser? I just got off the horn with Upton about him. Seems you're not the only one interested in finding the man. Then I suppose it's lucky I got here first. Suppose so. What was he brought in for, exactly? He's the suspected leader of a cooping gang. Makes me glad I didn't bother to vote. All those dirty politics are just a waste of time. And people wonder why nothing in Parliament ever changes. Harvey Presser, I presume. Who's asking? Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator. What do you want from me? Just a few minutes of your time. You don't have anywhere to be, do you? Hardy ha. Ask what you want, but I'm not answering anything until I see a lawyer. Do you recognize the man in this ferrotype? Should I? His name is Ronan Lespay. He was shot outside the Silent Raven on election night. That's a real shame. Are you saying you know nothing about the murder outside the Silent Raven on election night? Not a thing. I've never even heard of the Silent Raven. Is that right? Because I've spoken to at least three people who swore they saw you there that night. Yeah, and you're not police, so that doesn't scare me. You can't do a thing about it. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. There has to be a way to make him talk. I hear you were arrested for leading a cooping gang, is that right? I don't have to tell you a thing. You're not a copper. I had a little chat with your wife. You have a lovely family. Mildred? How did you... I may not be with the police anymore, but that doesn't mean I can't still get the information I need. You didn't tell her about me being in jail, did you? Don't worry. It was quite obvious your wife has no idea what you're involved in. As a man who values discretion, I thought it best not to shatter her illusions. That... that's awfully decent of you. Of course, I might change my mind, unless you start to cooperate. I have to say, Miles, you've become a real natural at this tough cop role. All right, fine. I'll talk. Just leave my family out of it. Do you recognize the man in this ferrotype? Yes, I do. That's Mr. Lespay. And how is it you know him? I was assigned to watch him, and then pick him up on election night. Assigned? By whom? My... employer. I'd really rather not name names, Mr. Fordham. I don't care about your employer. What I care about is what you were doing with Mr. Lespay. Well, it was a cooping scheme. He was one of the people I was told to pick up. Tell me what you know about the murder outside the Silent Raven. The most important thing I can tell you is that I didn't kill him. Do you know who did? Not a clue. I was inside the bar when I heard the gunshot. I went outside to see what had happened and found a spay on the sidewalk. And what happened next? What do you think? I panicked. He was in my care. I wasn't expecting anyone to get killed. I think Mr. Presser has a wildly different definition of the word care. I went inside and gave the barmaid 10 crowns to keep her mouth shut. Clearly, that was money misspent. Then I went back home, told my wife I was going away on a business trip for a few days, just in case. Good thing I did, too. 
I might get out of this with her none the wiser. What makes you so sure they'll let you out? Me? I'm just a small fish, but I could talk and talk about whales. That's valuable information. Quite the shrewd negotiator, this one. I think his skills have been wasted. Is this your first time in jail? Yeah, actually. Suppose you think I'm just some criminal scum, I huh? Born for the gibbet? I'm not a bad man, Mr. Fordham. I just made some mistakes. You've met my family. I'd do anything for them. Anything. I suppose no good deed goes unpunished. You can say that again. Tell me more about this cooping scheme. I got paid to find men to vote for Atwood. Simple, really. Once I found a good mark, I followed him a bit, knocked him out, then took him to the coop, a little room I rented near the Raven. I had about five men on election night, including the spay. Got them all liquored up and walked them over to the polls. Once each of them voted, we'd walk back over to the coop. I'd change the clothes, maybe give them a fake beard, and walk back for another vote. Did it for myself, too, so people would be less likely to notice. Kept it up for a few hours, until the murder. That's all the questions I have for now. Good. Leave me in peace. Beg your pardon. Your name wouldn't happen to be Jimbo, would it? Yeah? Who's asking? Miles Fordham, private investigator. Can't a guy enjoy his shore leave without being harassed by the law? I've done nothing wrong. I didn't say you had, and I'm most certainly not the law. I just want to ask you a few questions. All right, fine. Do you know Ronan the Spay? I knew him, yeah. Knew him? He and I haven't spoken recently. In about a month, actually. Things didn't go so well last time. How do you mean? Let's just say we didn't part on the best of terms. He made it very clear that he didn't want to speak to me again. Were you aware that Ronan was murdered? What? No, when? What happened? He was shot outside a tavern in Chumley four nights ago. Chumley? What was he doing there? I was hoping perhaps you could tell me. I honestly don't know. Ronan hardly went out, and he especially never crossed the river. Why was that? I think he was just too scared of the world to go out and see it for himself. He was happy enough reading about it in his books or collecting things I brought him back from my travels. Honestly, that's what I liked most about him. He was just an average, boring man. It was just the sort of balance I needed in my life. That's pretty much the exact same reason I always enjoyed working with you, Miles. You and Ronan had a special relationship, didn't you? Mr. Fordham, we're in an underground club. You don't have to tap dance around it. Yes, Ronan and I were a couple. At least up until last month. What happened? You don't mind me asking. We had a misunderstanding. Ronan thought I had been seeing someone else. He was extremely jealous. I tried to explain that he had it all wrong, but he wouldn't hear me out. I was going to give him some time to cool off, but, well, that's not going to happen now, is it? If it's any consolation, I found a letter you wrote him, which he still kept in his desk. Damn. Thank you for telling me that. Where does the name Jimbo come from? It's just a nickname. My real name's James Bogroth. And what is it you do? I'm a sailor. I thought you detective types were supposed to be extra observant. Shouldn't you be able to tell me what my occupation was just by looking at my fingernails or something? Sorry to disappoint. Perceptiveness is important in my line of work, but I'm also just a man. I think perhaps Jimbo has been reading too many of those detective stories in Brentwell's. Do you have any opinions about the recent election? Not really. I'm usually way at sea, so I don't keep up with politics. The sea's got her own laws. Anyway, I can't vote, so it's really none of my concern. But you're still affected by the decisions the Prime Minister makes. Not very fair, is it, Mr. Fordham? No, but hopefully Mr. Leroy will stand up for equal rights. Wouldn't that be nice? Does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Yes, that's my ship, the SS Priscilla. I see. Did Ronan know about it? Of course. He always used to ask me to bring him back some exotic souvenir. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Miles, have you ever noticed that this Jimbo fellow fits the description of the man loitering outside the taxidermy shop? The barmaid told us she saw someone matching that description at the Raven on election night. 
Not only that, Priscilla just so happens to be the name of the ship Jimbo works on. And the pistol used to murder Ronan has the initials JB etched on it. It could be a coincidence, but I think it's quite reasonable to consider him as a suspect.